Hey, Golf Martyrs. Thanks for coming back for Golf Smarter Mulligans number 18. I'm Fred Green. Golf Smarter Mulligans are the archived episodes of Golf Smarter interviews that are no longer available in podcast libraries. The focus is going through these early shows and bring back the educational conversations that are guaranteed to make you a better, smarter golfer. No discussions on golf courses, travel destinations, training aids, or books. Golf Smarter Mulligans is all instruction, all the time, but from a variety of perspectives. And that could mean uh, putting, mental game, short game, course management, you get the idea. Well, today is a different perspective. This is our first introduction to Katherine Roberts, the powerhouse behind Yoga for Golfers. Now, if you really believe that getting more distance is achieved by just taking lessons or pounding buckets, they invite you to stick around and have your perspective altered. For more about both of our game improvement and golf lifestyle podcasts, or to enter to win great prizes that are regularly given away and Golf Smarter, please visit our website, golfsmarter.com, or our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash golfsmartertv. Golf Smarter Mulligans is supported by twoguyswithgolfballs.com, offering premium used golf balls at a fraction of the cost of new ones. Why would you buy new balls when you can play with premium quality used balls that have probably been hit once, maybe twice? You know what it's like. (laughs) You take a ball out of the sleeve, you hit it once, and it's gone. Well, that's a used golf ball. You take a ball out of the sleeve, you hit it once, you hit it in the fairway. That's still a used golf ball. Now, even before you make your order from twoguyswithgolfballs.com, you can be confident that opening one of their sleeves is going to be just as good as a new set of balls that cost twice as much. Golf Smarter and Golf Smarter Mulligans listeners get an additional 10% off of every order every time with a coupon code GOLFSMARTER. That's twoguyswithgolfballs.com. And that discount offer expires on April 1, 2020. Mulligans is also brought to you by Autoslash.com. Autoslash.com is the rental car booking service that will save you time, hassle, and money. Autoslash.com. They apply every available coupon code to your next car rental, and that includes coupons you're eligible for based on a variety of memberships. Then they track your reservation daily until you pick up the car, and they email you when they find a better rate. The average user saves 30% off of any other booking site. And autoslash.com, well, what do you have to pay for that 30% savings? Nothing. It's completely free. So bookmark it now on your browser and use it for your next car rental so that you can get the best rate possible for the completely free autoslash.com. Welcome, Catherine. Thank you for having me, Fred. Well, very exciting for me because not only is it the beginning of our second year, I've never had a woman on the show before, and I've tried so many times, and to have a female yoga instructor is even better. (laughs) Well, you know, I mean, I think that to have a woman on the show is really important. I do, too. I mean, we're, you know, we're powerful entities. Yeah. (laughs) I know. I'm reminded of that every day. I'm sure you are. (laughs) (laughs) So um, I've got your Yoga for Golfers book. I've been doing yoga uh, pretty much my own kind of yoga. But once you start doing yoga and you get comfortable with it, you can you know create your own routine and pacing. And I do it on a daily basis now for over 20 years. Great. And I've only been playing golf for about 10 years, but um, I got even more serious about my yoga and stretching um, and conditioning once I started playing golf because it just made so much sense to me. Yeah, it's really... I think that... That obviously technology is very important in the game, and technology and being having the right clubs and being custom fitted and the right ball and the right apparel is always important. But the bottom line is the most important club that you have in your bag is your body. It's the one, the one tool that you have that you can truly control. And if you, you know, our objective in creating our programs and DVDs and books, etc., is to help golfers not just play better but to enjoy the game more and have longevity. I mean, I, you know, I grew up playing golf with my parents. I've played golf my whole life. 
Um, my father has since passed away, but he played golf until he was 87. My mother and I still play. She's 79. Mm. Um, and, you know, it's, it's truly a gift. It's, it's, you know, I say golf is not a game. It's life. Yeah. Yeah, I, I seem to find that out on a regular basis. Yeah. Um, I, I have to ask about your dad. Did he ever shoot his age? Um, I think my dad did shoot his age, and I have to tell you, though, it's funny because um, I say, you know, I was raised around the game that when I think about kind of a comfort, comforting sound or smell, to me is the sound of metal cleats on concrete and the smell of good scotch. <laughs> because, because, you know, I was raised in Philadelphia, and at our country club, it would mean that my dad was coming off the golf course and maybe had a couple drinks with his buddies, and he would come get me at the pool, and I could hear the sound of the metal cleats, and he would pick me up and take me over to the putting green, or we'd go and play nine holes by ourselves. And being the youngest of five children, it was a great opportunity to have some alone time with my dad. And, um, yeah, it's something that I really miss, honestly, um, oh. spending that time with him. I bet. Yeah. Well, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. That's really awesome. Um, let well, let me say one more thing, too. Oh, my, sure. father, my father says that he paid for my college education. I went to the University of Arizona. He said he paid for my college education from the quarters that he won for me on, on the putting green. Oh, come on. Yeah, well, of course, it's a joke. It, you know, Thank college you. tuition was a little bit more than that. But, Just you know, I mean, what, what, but one of the lessons he did teach me was always pay your debt. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and did, did he practice yoga? I mean, did you get to incorporate him into your program? Well, he didn't practice yoga, but my mother did. And I can remember being a little girl and ha watching my mother do the cat cow pose, which is something that we do a lot because it's great for increasing the flexibility in the muscles of the spine and awakening the core. Um, and I remember being a little girl and my mother practicing yoga in the house. So, and, and she still does. Awesome. Yeah. So, so he did shoot his age? He did. That's great. Yeah. That, that's a goal right there. It is there. a goal, absolutely. And if you're not stretching on a regular basis, you'll never get the opportunity. Never. And, you know, it's interesting. We talk about older golfers. Um, there was a, a, a very interesting study that was done by the University of Kansas recently, and they looked at club head speed in older golfers, and what they realized is that the two major variances for generating club head speed in older golfers, which is one of the first things that goes. When you talk to older golfers, the first thing they say is, I'm losing distance. And that's based on club head speed. So the two variables that will affect club head speed in older golfers are flexibility in the trunk and upper body strength. So if there's older golfers that are in the audience listening, a couple things you want to work on. One is flexibility and also strength in the upper body. Well, then let's get right to it. How do we do that? Well, you can do it through a number of ways. I mean, certainly I believe in the practice of yoga and um, also, you know, I do and teach some Pilates. But the bottom line is, you know, even just some simple rotations that you can do, and we have all kinds of tips on our website um, to help people that are just getting started, that don't really know where to, you know, where to begin. And that's yogaforgolfers.com? Yes, and, and it's, it's yoga, it's, it's yoga, F-O-R, golfers.com. Okay, thank you. And um, so we have all kinds of tips on helping people to get started and... Um, you know, I think the thing that's really important for people to understand is that the adherence to the program is more significant than the duration of time. So some people say, well, you know, I know I need, this is something people say to me all the time, I know I need to be more flexible, but I'm so inflexible, I don't know where to start. Hmm. So I say, well, therein lies the reason to start. Yeah, exactly. Right. But... You know, you can reap tremendous benefits just by working on your flexibility and strength conditioning for 15 minutes a day, three or four days a week. You don't have to be so grandiose about your objectives and say, well, if I don't have two hours, forget it, I'm not going to do it. Just 15 minutes a day will create tremendous rewards. And once you start, uh, and I'm speaking for myself, once you start doing it three times a week, four times a week, it becomes... Uh, uh, an addiction in the sense that if you don't do it, I know if I don't do it by two o'clock in the afternoon, I'm feeling like I should have done it. Yes. You, you know, um, the laws of inertia are very powerful. And so when, you know, I always say like attracts like. So if you're not moving, it will continue to make you move less. 
If you start moving even just a little bit, your body recognizes how beneficial this is, and you do crave it, absolutely. I mean, I practice yoga seven days a week. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Well, the other thing about it that I'm realizing is that if I don't do it, and one of the things I want to talk to you is a post-round routine, Mm -hmm. is um, if if I'm not stretching on a regular basis and I'm going to play golf, and the next day after I play... I'm really uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm I'm taking a leave, and um, I know that when I'm more flexible and when I'm doing it on a regular basis, I'm feeling better after a round of golf, which always makes it better for a round of golf. Um, so what I want to get from you is some either tips, routines, something I want to talk about pre-round routine. I want to talk about a post-round routine. Okay. And also, I notice that I get tight. During a round, if yes. there's things that I can do, because once I get tight, then the shoulders come up and then I don't swing well. It, you know, it's Absolutely. all about keeping loose. And we talk about that in the mind all the time is trying to keep loose and relax and not too many things going on in your head. But your body's got to promote that. Well, in our DVDs and books, I, and I'm really glad that you mentioned that because we have pre-round, during the round and post-round sequences of yoga-based postures. Now, a couple things that people want to think about, and the, and the training for those three areas is very different. When you're warming up for golf, you want to warm up with what we call dynamic flexibility conditioning. And that means that you don't hold the stretch for longer than one or two breaths, okay? Because what you're doing is you're preparing your body for an explosive movement. So to hold static stretching pre-round is probably not the best thing to do. So in our pre-round series of yoga exercises, I tell you, you know, for example, you can lie on your back with your arms perpendicular to your body, your knees bent, feet off the floor. As you inhale, you let your legs fall down to the left. As you exhale, you bring your legs back to center. Okay, slow down. Now, because I want to do this while I'm standing up right now, but I'm going to move my chair. I don't know if I'm going to lay down while we're doing this, but I really want to be able to do this as you're explaining it so I'm sure I have it right. Yeah. Well, okay. this is just, I'll just, I'll just share with you, this is just one of the series of pre-round exercises that you should do. Okay. So if you're lying flat on your back, you take your arms so that they're perpendicular to your body. Okay. Pointing to the sky. Pointing to the sky. Okay. You want the feet off the floor, knees are bent. Knees are bent. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. As you inhale, you let your legs in a controlled manner fall towards the left side of the body. This is increasing the range of motion and warming up the lumbar spine as well as the muscles of the pectoralis, the chest muscles. And my my legs are up together and they're moving simultaneously? Your legs are together, yes. And as a matter of fact, if you had a yoga block, I'd have you squeeze a yoga block between your knees. Okay. So my knees are touching if I don't have a block. Your knees are touching, correct. Okay. So as you inhale, you let your legs fall towards the left. Mm -hmm. And as you exhale, you focus on your oblique abdominals on the right-hand side. And you press those towards your spine as you bring your legs back to center. So make sure that I'm not pushing my stomach out or pooching my stomach out. You want to draw your navel towards your spine almost okay. always. And are my arms still pointing towards the sky or am I going the opposite direction? With your them? arms are pointing, your, your, your hands my are hands. pointing towards the sky, but your shoulders stay pinned to the floor. Okay, good. If the shoulder comes off the floor, then you've lost the stretch. What we're trying to do is do what's called a, called a shoulder and hip disassociation stretch. So what we're trying to do is increase and just warm up the range of motion between the shoulders and the hips, just like golf, right? Right. You want to be able to turn your shoulders separate from your hips, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is a way that you can warm up to prepare your body for this type of, you know, for the golf swing. Okay, so now the first one, we're just taking the breath, going to the left. Going to the left, exhaling, bringing the legs back to center. Inhale, take your legs over towards the right. Mm -hmm. As you exhale, press your navel towards your spine, and now your left oblique abdominal muscles towards the floor. And you use your oblique abdominal muscles to bring the legs back and forth. So what I'm doing is really threefold. Number one, I'm incorporating breathing and movement. Mm Mm-hmm which is the key to practicing yoga and also to warm up the muscles of the body and to calm the mind in golf. I'm warming up the shoulders, the trunk, and the hips, and the lumbar spine. And I'm also preparing your body for um, rotation, 
Okay, and then fourth, the fourth thing is that I'm warming up the core abdominal muscles at the same time. And this is not a fast motion. No, it's a slow. No, I don't. And you know, it's not about flailing the legs back and forth and letting the shoulders come off the floor. It's very controlled and very intense. Yeah, I see guys warming up at the driving range, and they take and they'll take a, a club, put it put it behind their their shoulders, or you know, on their shoulders behind right. their head, and they'll go flap, 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 and it's like that scares me. Right. Well, the thing is, is that you want to warm up again dynamically. So if you take the club behind your shoulders, and this is a stretch that we do pre round, you can start to inhale and exhale as you rotate the trunk. Once the trunk is warm and you're initiating the movements from your oblique abdominal muscles, you can increase the speed, okay? Because golf is a, golf is a speed sport, obviously. But I would never want someone to just cold, you know, with cold muscles, take the club behind their head and boom, 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 stretch, you know, twist, 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 and then go hit the ball. Right. And that's what you're describing. Yeah. So you can do that twisting, but you want to warm up by gently inhaling and exhaling, keeping the dynamic movement. Again, dynamic means you inhale in one direction, you exhale in the other direction. Inhale one direction, exhale the other direction. That's dynamic flexibility conditioning. And then you can increase the speed. I think that's important to work on the speed before you, before you play. Okay. That's great. Give me a second one for now. I don't. That's not all I should do before a pre round. No, it? no. But it's you know. Um, I mean that that's one that's obviously very good because as I said, there's there's four different things that we're targeting in that warm up. Right, right. Um, another thing that you should do. This is very very important to warm up the feet and the lower body. So if you look at like the, what we call the kinetic link in the golf swing, are you familiar with that? Nope. Okay. Through three D motion analysis that we have. We can scientifically see the way that power is generated, accelerated, as well as decelerated through the golf swing. And the efficiency of that acceleration and deceleration is equally as important as, you know, flexibility and strength and balance. So the way that the analogy that I use is what we're trying to create is maximum velocity at impact, right? Would you agree with that? Sure. Okay. So what is maximum velocity at impact So, in the golf swing? Well, it means that when the body is coiled up and energy is accelerated from the body, from the legs, through the hips, through the core, the shoulders, the arms, and the hands, and finally out to the club, the, when it's at the, the maximum amount of velocity has been accelerated, it's the point of deceleration and retraction that actually the maximum velocity is experienced. And this is the analogy that I use. Okay, so I, I grew up with a brother and three sisters. I'm the youngest of five children, which means that when I was doing dishes, I got smacked in the butt a lot with a towel. <laughs> That's not the only thing it means, but yeah, I can see that. Okay, so you think about how, so if you think about taking a dish towel, right, and you coil, coil, coil up the dish towel, right, because just like the golf swing, so you're coiling up and generating energy through the through the rotation of the, the spine, okay, and the body, you coil that up. When is it, so again, think about the dish towel. When, when do you have the maximum amount of velocity at impact? It's not when the towel is coiling up. It's when the towel is fully extended and retracting. Hmm, okay. The exact same thing in the golf swing. Oh, interesting. Right. It's when, it's, it's so, so, it's when the, when the energy is generated, okay, not so much when it's fully generated, but at that point of deceleration is what helps to generate the maximum velocity at impact. So the reason why I bring that up is because when you ask what are some other things that we can do to warm up the body, okay, what I try to do is I try to get the lower body warm as well as what my, my sequence starts from the lower body, goes through the hips, the trunk, the shoulders, the hand, finally the hands and wrists, because that's how the power is accelerated through the body in the golf swing. You've studied this. Extensively. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, a bit, I'm a bit of a research junkie. Oh, is that right? You yeah. I love the Internet. Yeah, so I, I read everything that I can, and, I, and, I, you know, and I, I think that the moment that I decided that I knew everything about the golf swing would be the moment that I would leave this business, because... That would mean that my curiosity had 
subsided and I would no longer be of service to my students. And that's what I feel I do. Hmm. So, so, um, sorry to distract you. Go ahead. No, 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 it's okay. So, um, so once again, it's this, it's, so that's why our, you know, a lot of our programs, just with the warm up, will start from the lower body or potentially warm up the core with the rotation. I think it's very important to start with warming up the core, which is the rotation warm up that I just described to you, mm-hmm. because it does help generate heat through the trunk of the body. And that is something that's obviously dramatically stressed. The number one injury in golf is the lumbar spine and shoulders and hands and wrists. So I like to really work on warming up the lumbar sp- I mean, the core of the body first. Yeah. But then, you know, having said that, um, warming, up, warming up the feet and the quadriceps and the hamstrings and the hips is very, very important. And how do we do that? Well, one of the things that you can do is what we call a crescent lunge in yoga. So you can hold the golf club in your right hand and take your left leg at a 90-degree angle and step your right foot back as far as you can. Mm-hmm. And then you come high up onto your toes of the right foot and then press your right heel back. High up on the toes of your right foot, inhaling, press your right heel back. So the left, you realize you're in a lunge position, right? Right. And, and I wanna, I'm trying to do this. Um, again, the stomach is held in. Your the navel is-, is always drawn in. This is an acronym that I share in all my books and DVDs. This is kind of one of my trademarks. The acronym is NTR, and this is an acronym that every, um, every listener should take to heart because what it does is it stabilizes the core of the body um, by utilizing these three concepts, and that is N refers to the navel drawing towards the spine. Mm-hmm. T is a slight tucking and internal posterior rotation of the tailbone uh, or the hips, slight. R is rib cage lifts off the waistline. So it's NTR, navel in, tailbone down, rib cage up. Now you navel can do in. navel in, tailbone down tailbone. or tucking under slightly, rib, rib cage, cage lifting. Okay, rib cage rib up. Cage up. Mm-hmm. NTR, navel in, tailbone down, rib cage up. Right, because um, when I was in this lunge position as you described it, I felt that I was um, Pushing, I was tucking, but actually my butt was going back. And I you could don't want to do that. Right. You don't want to feel like you're leaning forward because what you're doing is you're basically just letting your belly just flop down. Mm-hmm. Okay, what you want to do is you always want to work on increasing the strength of the core. And this is what we teach that's different from what most people teach is it starts from the very base of the abdominals. It's what's called the TVA, your, the transverse abdominus muscles. Okay. And that, those essentially are the stabilizing muscles for the hips and the lumbar spine. It's like the TVAs, the transverse abdominus, the lowest part of that pelvis, is, is like a girdle for the low back. Now, the other thing it will do is it will help you generate power in your swing. What I, I do, because, yeah. What I do is because I have tremendous awareness of the area. What I'm describing is the area that's below the navel and above the pubic bone. Okay, so you want to feel like that area is pulling in towards your spine. I mean, all the listeners can do this right now as they're driving in the car, listening to you, or on the train, or on the train, wherever the, wherever you are. Yeah, on the train, in the car, sitting in bed, you know, listening to you on the computer, whatever it is. Sit up as tall as you can and feel like you're pulling your navel towards your spine, you're slightly tucking the tailbone, and you're lifting the rib cage up. Mm -hmm. Join along. Follow the bouncing ball here. Absolutely. And so... um Anyway, so it's it's so that so what what you can start to do is when you have awareness, what you do is when you set your stance in your pre-shot routine, this is what I do. I set my stance, I take a cleansing breath, I always have a waggle that I keep going. I just keep the waggle going, but I'm doing all this while I'm waggling. Mm-hmm. And then before I begin my takeaway, I draw my navel towards my spine. And you will feel more power in your swing because you're stabilizing your spine. The first and foremost thing that we teach is breathing. Yeah. 
And that's one of the key components to what separates what we do from just traditional golf fitness programs, is that we really teach a genuine mind-body connection to the game. And so breathing is such an integral part of yoga that, um, that it teaches you awareness of breathing in, in the golf swing. You know, and you're talking, you also talked about, you know, you get around the 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th hole, you start to burn out. People that hold their breath on the golf course are burning up energy unnecessarily. Mm-hmm. And so when you have awareness of your breathing, and I would ask the listeners to, to, to ask themselves, when do I breathe in my golf swing? Nine out of ten people have no idea or they hold their breath. This is doing a disservice to to your swing and to your ability to maximize your energy on the golf course, also to quiet your mind. Well, I I know that I'll take a deep breath before I swing. I don't know during my swing. I don't know if I do anything. And, yeah, I don't know. Right. And if you don't know, so here's an, this is an example that I use. Coming back to this, we want to create maximum velocity of impact, right? Yeah. Okay, have you ever watched tennis? Sure. What do tennis players do when they want to create maximum velocity at impact? Grunt. They grunt. They fully exhale at the point of impact. I just can't imagine watching a golfer taking a swing going, ah! Well, it's funny that you said that because I was... um, Sorry. Obviously, I do work on the Golf Channel, and I was... uh, working your game night one night with Jerry Fultz, and I said to Jerry, I said, I think you're going to start to see golfers exhaling and grunting on the course. And he said, I really hope you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it means you'd scare the crap out of people. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. Okay. Um, where have we? Fit, I'm still in a lunge. Are we still? <laughs> you're still in a lunge? Well, I think you're probably warmed up by now. Okay, fine. Uh, did we finish with the lunge? And we're now we're finished with the lunch. And now we're in our round. We're at the ninth, tenth hole. Um, are we? Are we in the middle of our swing? I, we're, we're in the we're, Let's let's say we're around twelve, and your back's starting to tighten up. Yes. Okay. okay. I have a great stretch for you to do as your back is starting to tighten up. Okay. Great. What you want to do is you want to hold on to the vertical stanchion of the golf cart, or if you're not if you're not using a cart, you can just use the golf club for balance. Okay. What you do is take your right foot and place it on the outside of your left knee. So your right ankle is on the outside of your left knee, and you're standing tall. Mm -hmm. Okay? Then what I want you to do is I want you to, of course, what's the first thing you do? NTR, right? Right. Navel in, tailbone tucks under, rib cage lifts. After you do that, I want you to take a deep inhalation, and on the exhalation, I want you to bend your left knee as much as you can and sit back as if you're sitting into a chair. Whoa. Okay. Yep. What that's going to do is stretch the glute medius, glute maximus, piriformis of the right side. I feel that in my hip. My, uh... You'll feel it in your hip, and that's one of the areas that gets people very tight. As a matter of fact, you know, especially if you have a reverse C, very often a reverse C will cause a compression in the spine in that area and in the glutes in that area. Reverse C? A reverse C. What is that? A reverse C is a swing flaw that looks like, you know, when you swing the club and you're in the finish position, it looks like you're sinking all the way back, dropping back, so that your back looks like it's the letter C. Oh, okay. So that causes compression in the spine. Yeah. Okay. Plus, yeah. Think, plus think about this, okay? What other sport asks you to swing as hard as you can, right, um, in an action that takes under two seconds from a static position and to generate club head speed at about 100 miles an hour. Nothing. Right. Maybe, maybe baseball, but even then there's a little bit of forward motion. Motion. I work with the San Diego Padres, so I'm real familiar with the biomechanics of batting and, and hitting and all that. Yeah, but the ball's moving. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And there is somewhat of a forward motion in that. In mm-hmm. batting. So, um, but anyway, so if you think about that, it's, and, and if you're playing golf, right, so you walk three to four miles in a round, you swing probably over 100 times, including practice swings, you stand over 30 to 40 putts, this is t- tremendously stressful on the body. Yeah. So you really need to be stretching throughout the round, and that's, that's a great stretch. I call, that, I call that a standing hip opener. Okay, so you do that with one leg. How many breaths do you take through that? Um, what I do is, again, I move dynamically. So I inhale, take a big inhale. I exhale, and I move into the stretch. I inhale, I come out of it slightly. I exhale, I move back into the stretch. I could do that ten times on each side. Oh, wow. Okay. Great. 
Yep. Oh, that's a good one. I, I was recently told just um, putting my arms out by my sides, stretching out and just rotating circles in reversing direction. And I found that that's helped loosen up uh, around my shoulders. That's so, a good idea. I like that. Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Make sure I'm not doing something stupid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, but it definitely has brought my shoulders down. I know that when I'm not swinging well later in the round, it's because my shoulders are getting tight and tense and they're, they're coming up. Absolutely. So that really loosens it up and brings it back down. It's helped me a lot. Yeah, and also, you know, where the shoulders are and the mobility and what we call the thoracic spine, which is kind of the area behind the heart, um, is really important to keep flexible, especially in your putting. Because, you know, shoulder rotation initiates from the thoracic spine, from that area. And if you are tense and you have what we call kind of that rounded hump back, it's, it's actually called kyphosis, that rounded area in the mid-thoracic spine. If that area is rounded and not flexible, it will impede your ability to rotate around the axis of your spine. So any exercises that you can do to keep that flexible and strong is very important for golf. Now, let's get to, we finished our round of golf. Um, we should do some stretching, loosening up. I mean, we're not going to necessarily go to the, to the driving range, but we should do something, right, to yes. help, help get rid of everything. Yes, well, um, there's great research about the benefits of post-round conditioning, primarily before bedtime, because oh. the body is in a state of healing. And so, um, actually, on our most recent DVD, which is called Lowering Your Score, I do a whole post-round sequence of exercises. By the way, because I travel and teach about 60% of the time, if there are any listeners out there that are traveling golfers or just people that travel for work, this is a tremendous series to do because what it does is it helps, uh, you know, it helps offset soreness and lactic acid in the lower body, which is what happens when you walk right? Mm -hmm. so if you walk three to four miles, as we were saying. So some of the things that you can do is you can lay with your legs up the wall and your body. So imagine a 90, 90 degree angle. So your legs are up the wall and your lower body is on the ground. Okay. But, so in yoga, we call that an inversion. What you're doing is you're allowing all the blood to flow from the legs towards the brain. So, you know, a lot of golfers will feel very, uh, will feel stiffness and achiness in their ankles and in their knees mm -hmm. after a round. This will offset that. And this should be done before bedtime. Another one that you can do is we talked about the rotation warming up. This is a way that you can work the, the, um, the, the muscles of the back and the hips and the shoulders post round. So what you would do is you would take your legs together. If you're lying on your back, your arms are, are again perpendicular to your body. Your knees are bent, heels are close to the buttocks, and you just let your legs fall down to the left. And you can you can put a couple yoga blocks or a couple of towels or something underneath your knees if your knees don't come all the way to the floor. And you should just rest on your back in that position for about three minutes and then switch sides. So what I like the idea is that means I could still go to the 19th hole after the round. I don't have to stretch then. This is all at night at of the course. end of the day. I mean, let's be realistic. Most yeah. people do go to the 19th hole. So yeah. I'm not going to give people a <laughs> wow. series of exercises that they're going to do on the 19th hole. Yeah, of course, after a few that. beers, they may lay with their legs up the wall. Who knows? <laughs> You know, but the back seat but, of a cab, of course. But this is really, but this is really, this primarily, this sequence that I'm describing to you is to be done um, um, before bedtime after the round. Oh, that's a great time to do it, and you'll yeah. probably sleep a lot better. You do sleep better. Another one that you can do is you again lying on your back, palm, um, arms are perpendicular to the body, palms facing up. Take the soles of your feet together and bring your heels as close to your groin as possible so that the knees fall down to the side. And again, put some towels underneath, your, underneath the outside of your knees so that you're not overstretching or stressing. This should be relaxing with a gentle stretch. Okay, well, I'm sorry, but I'm going to make you do that one more time. Okay, so I'm lying on my back. Yep. My arms are perpendicular to my body, palms facing the ceiling. Perpendicular, again, like they're pointing up toward the ceiling? Yeah, palms okay. are facing the ceiling. Okay. I'm bringing the soles of my feet together and bringing my heels as close to my groin as possible. But they're on the ground? They're on the ground, yeah, okay. they're on the ground. Okay. And no. then I let my knees fall out to the side. Uh -huh. And if my knees don't come to the ground, which most people's 
knees will not come to the ground. They're not that flexible in their internal, you know, hip rotators and adductors. And that's okay? That's fine. Okay. That's absolutely fine. But what I would want them to do is put towels underneath their knees so that their knees are supported. Okay. So this is going to open up your hips. Yes. And that'll feel great. It's a hip opener. And you can lie on your back for, you know, three minutes or so. The way that you would come out of that is that you would take your hands underneath the outside of your knees and you would bring your knees back together. Yeah, don't force them up by themselves. No, no, and do it very, very slowly. Be very honoring of your body. And just take long, slow, deep breaths. The bottom line with this post-round sequence is that you allow gravity to move you deeper into the pose. Mm-hmm. So it's not the muscular energy that I ask you to do during the pre-round, right? Because you're preparing the body for this explosive movement. It's not what I ask you to do during the round. It's a completely different style of flexibility conditioning. And all are equally as good because they're appropriate for the time that you're you know, implementing the program. This is such good work that you do. Thank you. This is really awesome. This is so important. Um, and just to give people a perspective of uh, on this post post uh, round conditioning, when a TV show is over and the next one begins, you got two or three minutes. You can do it then. Absolutely. You know? I mean, it doesn't take a lot of time, and you're going to get such benefits from it. You're going to feel so much better. And and you know the thing is is that. You know, when I started on this path, I've been involved in fitness for 20 years, but frankly, I was, I was um, in corporate life, and about um, 11 years ago, I started teaching yoga full-time, and about 10 years ago is when I really started to actively pursue the golf-fitness relationship, and, you know, 10 years ago, that was pretty new stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, and... I know, I am confident, and I will give every one of your listeners a guarantee that I can help them hit the ball further and they'll feel better on the golf course. The bottom line is, is that when you implement these programs, you feel better every day. Yep. And that's, that's our objective. I know I can get you to hit the ball further. I can get you more distance. I can have you feel better at address. I can work on your posture. Everything that we teach will help maximize your performance on the course. What we're after also is to help you have a more balanced life off the course, and that's, that's the objective in what we teach. Yoga for Golfers is the name of the book. Yoga for Golfers are the DVDs, and yogaforgolfers.com. Catherine Roberts, this was really awesome information and important for everybody, no matter what your skill level on the golf course is. Absolutely. Thank I, you I really so appreciate much. the opportunity to share this, this knowledge and our insights. <laughs> 